Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at the new Sennheiser XSWD Lavalier and ENG sets. These awesome guys are tiny, flexible, and high quality alternatives to traditional microphone sets. First we'll do a brief unboxing, then I'll demonstrate how to use them, including the indicator lights, and then we'll do indoor and outdoor range and audio test. I'm going to compare them to the Zoom H1 recorder when it's used with the budget Lavalier mic, as well as some other microphones including the Rode Video Micro. Now you are listening to the XSWD right now, but I'll indicate on the screen throughout the video which microphone it is that you're listening to. If you guys do want to check these out and also support the channel, you can do so by clicking the links in the description below and also head over to the newly redesigned betterlifereviews.com website where I have lots of written reviews as well as daily deals to save you guys the most time and money. All right, so let's get to it. All right, guys, so let's check out here what's included in these two different sets, and that is the portable lavalier set and the portable ENG set. And then we'll do some tests here in the studio with uh, audio and interference, and then also take them outside and do some tests with audio and also with range. So just for reference, right now you're listening to a Zoom H1, which is a portable recorder, and a Mic J, which is a very inexpensive lavalier microphone. So those two things in combination are about $150, and that is a way to get, you know, some fairly inexpensive portable audio. Uh, the difference there is that you're gonna have to get the audio separate from the video and then take both of those things into like an editing program and synchronize, synchronize them up in post-production. So it is an extra step. Um, this is kind of superior in that way, but it is a way to do that. So I'll put the links for in the description for uh, those things and also for these sets as well, of course. So just looking here at the portable lavalier set, kind of self-explanatory. It includes a lavalier microphone, a transmitter and a receiver. Um, and it's gonna allow you to you know, use the microphone on your body um, to get you know, a very high quality of audio being close to your mouth. Uh, so you're gonna get that great audio. It's gonna be better for excluding you know, external audio um, because it is closest to where you're actually recording the source. But here in the portable ENG set, um, I don't know what ENG means. They probably mean something, but um, that's going to include all the stuff that's included in the lavalier set. But additionally, it's just gonna include this female XLR transmitter. So. It's really great for something like, um, for instance, a, a portable um, handheld microphone, a vocal microphone. If you want to use that for like interviews and that kind of stuff. Um, this, for instance, is a very inexpensive one from Amazon. It's just around $20. Um, so we'll actually check us out then as well and see how it sounds. Um, so you can use it for you know, interviews and that kind of stuff. Or if you wanted to use this as well, XLR is generally considered to be a higher quality of audio. Uh, so that all the microphones you know, that are very high end tend to use XLR input. So if you want to use something like the Rode NTG microphone, uh, then you can just use this, hook that into that Rode NTG, and you have a very lightweight, very portable, and very high quality audio source that you could use to like um, put it on a boom pole or something like that, and hang it over top of your talent's head, and that would be great for like uh, you know small budget film production and that kind of stuff um, to get some really great high quality audio. So, gives you some extra options here. This set here retails for 350, the portable lavalier set. Um, and this, the ENG set retails for 450. So the difference uh, is that if you want to buy, for instance, just this uh, XLR female transmitter, that'll be about $180 separately by itself. So this being $100 more than this, uh, you're saving about $80 by getting these in combination, you know, right now together. Uh, and also they're kind of paired out of the box and that kind of stuff as well. So as far as comparables go, uh, this portable lavalier set is very similar to uh, the Rode Filmmaker set, for instance. And that set goes for about $400. And this goes for $350. Um, and as far as the portable ENG set, it's very similar to Sennheiser's AVX set. Uh, so it's a very, very popular set used by tons of YouTubers and that kind of stuff. Um, and it has you know, the ability to do XLR audio. Um, and it's also going to be $700 about. So this is $450 and that is $700. Um, so there's still a pretty big difference in terms of price in those two things. So let's check these out here. So like I said, they're exactly the same except for having that XLR transmitter. Um, so just on the inside here, you'll see they're exactly the same. So uh, this is having two different things and just having three because of having that extra transmitter. So this of course being, um, as you can see, there's a little sticker on the back here. That means that it is your, you know, your microphone or your transmitter. Uh, so that's where that hooks into. And then you're going to have separate from that, your XLR, if you want to use that instead. So these are the two devices you use to transmit the audio. As you can see, they're exactly the same size, um, except for having you know the XLR on the top there. And uh, of course, on the bottom, you have a USB-C connection. So that is where you use to charge these. 
Um, so they're going to have uh, a five hour approximate, you know, runtime, uses time for each of these. And they're gonna take about three hours to charge. Now the cool thing with them is that you can actually charge them while you're using them by using something like a power bank on the bottom there. Um, you just need to have one for the receiver and one for the transmitter if you need to charge both of them simultaneously. But as you can see, very, very small, um, tiny, even in the hand there. Um, so that's kind of one of the big features of that. And then on the front here, you know, you just have your one button. We're gonna check this out more in terms of function. Um, that's really it, so very, very simple. And then here we have the, so this is the, uh, the belt clip. You can see how it clips in there very easily. And this will just snap onto your belt uh, to kind of hold it. If you don't want to have it actually in your pocket, you can just put it on the belt there. And uh, this will be the receiver. You can see by the camera there. So um, camera being receiver, you know, plugging directly into the camera. It's pretty obvious there by that sticker, but otherwise, you know, um, these two things look exactly the same because they both have a 3.5 millimeter connection and they both go, you know, they both could be used identically. So you just have to see, you know, make sure that you get the right one as far as that goes. And here we have the microphone. So the ME22 microphone, uh, it's a great microphone. And as you can see here, this actually does um, screw then into the, um, you know, the transmitter and that way it won't come out and that kind of stuff as well. So really nice, great quality microphone. Uh, and this actually, this capsule actually appears to be um, very tight on here. Uh, so some of these will just pop right off, but this one actually seems very good um, on there. So that's great that it's not gonna just pop off and get lost easily. And there you can see the different types of transmitters also that you can get for this set. So there's a pedal board set, uh, you can get an XLR mail set if you want, and you can get also, you know, these quarter inch sets for uh, musical instruments and that kind of stuff. And here's all the different sets. So they have a portable bass set, a portable lavalier set, a portable interview set and a portable ENG set. And I think there's actually some other sets as well. And then you'll just find here, you know, which one's gonna go on your camera, this one here. And this is just gonna mount, you know, right into here on your camera. So snaps in there. I was kind of worried about this moving around a lot, um, but now I feel that it is pretty good in terms of being very um, secure. And then this will just be a, um, a, you know, a cold shoe mount that mounts on the top of the camera. Uh, and then you can spin it down to secure it. And you should be able to mount this either direction, I believe, which is interesting, I was concerned about that. Um, so something like, for instance, the Sony a6400, it just came out. It has a um, very, very, you know, has that pop-up screen basically, that if you turn something sideways, you know, or have a larger microphone, it's going to obscure the screen. So I think it's gonna be really cool for something like that. You should be able to mount it, you know, um, vertically, and it should take up less space as far as, you know, obstructing the screen. So it's also a pretty interesting idea with that. But that's how that sits. And of course, it can also be screwed then if you want um, onto like some kind of a, um, a different adapter or a pole or something like that if you have a need for that as well. And then this here is the, you know, the actual um, 3.5 millimeter connector that's gonna go to the camera. So you'll see that on this side, you know, it screws into the uh, receiver here. So you just push it in and then screw it down tight. And the other end will go to your camera. So of course, cameras aren't gonna have a, a screw connection any that I've seen anyway. Um, and this, just for reference, this is also gonna be a um, TRS. So um, just having these two bands here instead of three like on cell phone. And then in the bottom, we'll see that we get a charging cable. Um, so this is a very nice charging cable. However, there is two different devices. You'll have to charge them separately uh, or just get another USB-C cable. So anything that uses a standard USB-A, you know, it's just gonna hook into your, uh, can hook into your computer if you want, or I can hook into um, any kind of a standard wall outlet that's five volts or it can hook into um, like a power bank as well. So the fact that these can be charged by a power bank, even when using them is very, very cool. So let's hook that in there. And I definitely like that they chose to go with USB-C. Uh, of course, it's gonna be a stronger connection. It's gonna connect better. Uh, it's gonna have a longer life and that kind of stuff. So it should last you for a really long time. And then at the bottom here, we just have um, some stickers for labeling. And then of course your standard kind of stuff here with uh, instructions and all that, so. All right guys, so let's go ahead and check these out quick before we actually go out and use them. Uh, as you can see here, or probably you can actually see, there's one little light and then there's one button and that's it as far as, you know, controls go on these. The button is a little bit recessed and also it is um, a little bit hard to push. So it's gonna be very hard to push that, especially, you know, if this is mounted on your camera, and this is mounted on your pants or belt clip, it's gonna be very hard to push that unintentionally. Um, and then if you press them in, they're going to uh, turn a color. And the color that they turn initially is gonna be the current battery percentage that you have. So if I push these in just briefly, you're gonna see that they are yellow. And that means that they have between five and 75% battery. Then they're gonna flash green, and then they're gonna turn solid green, and that indicates that they're currently paired. 
Um, so if you have the first initial battery status, if it is between five and 75%, that's yellow. If it's greater than 75%, that is green. And if it's less than 5% battery remaining, it'll be red. So of course, at that point, you would want to you know, recharge them before you use them. Uh, and then while you're using them, it should remain green the entire time that you're using them, as long as they're connected. You can mute them from either end. So if I push the button here one time, you'll see they both turn yellow. And that means that it's muted. So the good thing there is that, you know, uh, if for instance, the talent for some reason were to want to mute it, you know, if so no one else heard him, uh, but then he, you know, forgot to unmute it. The person, if you had somebody else helping you, you know, and they were operating the camera, they could see that this is yellow and they could actually press it then on their end and unmute it. So it's helpful in that way. So that's, like I said, it should stay green then the entire time that you're using the, uh, you know, using the uh, microphone there. If it were to change color, for instance, it were to start uh, blinking red and green, that would mean that there's less than 15% charge remaining. So if you, you know, take a little break and you look at these and you see that it's blinking red and green, you'll know, you know that you have to kind of start to wrap things up or you have to hook up like a portable charger and start charging them again. If it gets to where it's rapid blinking red only, that means that there's less than 5% remaining. And of course, at that point, you're, you know, really want to um, recharge them and move things, move things along. So there is some level of indication there. Uh, if you just take a brief break, you can check that out and verify that you have enough battery left. And like I said, it should last about five hours, uh, which would be more than enough time for most people, you know, unless you're recording all day long. So really good. Um, the same operation goes for any other, you know, um, extension like the XLR one, uh, same thing. And you can also pair additional devices if they're not already paired very easily. Um, using the system, so really good. And if you wanna turn them off, all that you do then is simply hold both of them again as well, about three seconds, and you'll see that the lights turn off, and then you know that they're off, you know, and they're not using any power. So if you wanna charge them again, you just stick a USB-C cable in there and charge them right up. So very small, very easy to use. Um, so these do connect to each other automatically. They will switch signals uh, automatically, so no, there's not required to switch from band to band, or do anything like that. So um, there's less control there, but basically you're just trusting the system to do the work itself. Um, so there's a lot less worry and a lot less hassle in terms of that, how that goes. Um, so you don't have to worry about it. And as far as the actual input signal goes then to your camera, uh, there's also no adjustment for that either, other than you're gonna adjust that actually on your camera. Uh, so you'll have to you know, um, look at the levels that you're getting on your camera as far as the audio going into your camera. Uh, and then maybe it may help to do a few tests initially as well just to kind of see, you know, at that level that you're getting, how does it sound and are you happy with that? You're not peaking and that kind of stuff. Uh, they do recommend, I think, turning off any kind of volume limiter in the guide, um, but I'm going to uh, check that out as well on my camera. I haven't had any problems previously, so I'm gonna check it out and see if it makes a difference uh, with that. So with that said, let's go ahead and do a little testing. All right, so this is gonna be an audio test of the Sennheiser XSWD, and this is at negative 12 decibel with the mic limiter turned on, this is a baseline test. All right, so right now the only difference is that I turned the mic limiter off. So before it was on, now it's off. We're still recording on the G85, we're using the Sennheiser, and we are at negative 12 dB. So you guys can see if there's a difference now. All right, so right now we're at negative eight dB on the camera. So we're actually four decibels louder than we were before, uh, and it already appeared to be peaking out before as well. We're gonna check this out, and the mic limiter is still turned off. All right, so here we are at zero dB. Might actually have to turn this down a little bit because it's probably gonna be super loud. Um, I am going into the red quite a bit and clipping the audio according to my audio meters on the camera. Uh, but the mic limiter level, the mic level limiter is still turned off uh, and we're at zero dB. All right, so here we are again at zero dB, but I've turned the mic level limiter on for the Panasonic G85, so your camera may or may not have that. Uh, but according to my levels now, I'm getting levels roughly the same as I was getting at negative 12 dB. Um, so it definitely appears to be helping a lot with pre preventing the audio from blowing out and clipping and that kind of stuff. Uh, so mic level limiter turned on at zero dB. This is how it sounds. All right, then just again for reference, this is the Zoom H1 recorder using the Mic J mic. All right, so let's keep right on rolling here. I'm gonna try lots of other tests actually just to make sure I can get the most evidence possible. So this is the Sennheiser again, XSWD plugged into the mic j mic this time so we're just going to compare this to the other audio from the sennheiser me22 and see you know does this differ from what that was or does this seem similar all right guys so it's a little bit of a crazy test here but what we're doing is using the sennheiser xs wireless digital and also the zoom recorder uh, so this is the same you know included kit that's hooked to the me22 lav mic uh, which is there and then that's being you know transmitted wirelessly to the receiver which is on top of the camera but instead of going directly into the camera, I'm passing that through a Zoom H1 recorder. 
Uh, so that should hopefully do a couple things. One, it should allow us to use the Zoom as like a preamp. Uh, and also in addition to then hopefully cleaning up the audio, then you can also can do is you should be able to record onto the um, Zoom recorder itself. So since you're actually passing the audio through into the Zoom input and out of the Zoom output and then into the camera, I should get audio on the camera itself, um, but I should also be able to get audio onto the Zoom. So in case there was any problem with the audio in the camera uh, itself, then I don't have a secondary audio that I then could use uh, for my video. So it's kind of like a dual backup setting uh, now that audio would have to be synced because it's not, you know, in that situation, it would not be directly going to the camera. Uh, basically, I have two copies of audio, one getting passed into the camera and one going through the Zoom recorder. So as long as this is working okay, um, you know, we should be getting good audio. Now, of course, if this were to fail or have interference, it's not going to matter because it's still passing wirelessly uh, before it's actually going to the Zoom. But one potential solution, so I'll let you guys hear now. This is the sound from the... Um, receiver directly into the camera. This is how it sounds. And now this is the sound from the receiver uh, going directly into the Zoom H1 recorder, but not getting passed to the camera. So this is, a, this is a recording from the Zoom instead of the recording from the camera. And I'll plug it in. And then you can hear how it sounds now. So this is how it sounds on this microphone. Now, some of it may be due to the actual microphone, uh, but this does have pretty good reviews. Uh, it does kind of extend that, as you can see, to be fairly long. Uh, it doesn't look too bad, in my opinion, and this gives you a lot of flexibility then. Uh, you know, if you're somewhere where you need to record an interview or do something kind of off-cuff or something happens to your lapel mic, uh, then you have an option to use this. Uh, so very, very interesting. All right, now I'll be quiet for just one second so you guys can hear kind of the noise floor uh, of this microphone and adapter as well. All right, guys, so this going to be real kind of honest and raw and kind of unscripted with you about my feelings so far towards the Sennheiser XS Wireless Digital System. There are some awesome things about this system, and there are some not-so-great things. So I kind of want to discuss those uh, and let you guys make an educated decision about whether or not you feel like this is a good system for you. So... Uh, for me, the, one of the biggest problems is, you know, I really wanted this to work. I spent probably 10, 12 plus hours on the system trying to get the best optimal settings for my camera, um, and it's been difficult. So what I found is that the signal is too hot, that it's peaking, uh, that it's clipping in camera, the audio. And I'm at the lowest setting, as we discussed, of negative 12 on the Panasonic G85 for the audio, and also having the mic level, level limiter on. Uh, and that does help, but it still does have times where the audio level is too high. Um, so, you know, I do think it's going to be a problem kind of across the board. I've watched some other reviews as well. If your camera has very low preamps, very poor preamps, uh, then it may not be a problem for you. But I do think it's going to be a problem for a lot of people. So I do think they should have built some kind of an attenuator into the system as a way to lower that level, um, like by negative 10 or negative 20 dB. Um, that is something that you get on the more expensive AVX system from Sennheiser and also from the Rode Roadlink system. So that's a way that you can you know, decrease that audio and kind of eliminate that problem uh, where you cannot do that here in the system. And I think it will be probably very hard to integrate that into it. Um, I don't know if there's any way that they could do that, but I'm kind of doubtful. Um, maybe through some kind of a firmware update, but it seems unlikely. So uh, this is supposed to kind of limit the audio levels and kind of regulate that. Um, however, I don't find it to be doing a very good job with that. Um, so it is kind of too high. And uh, if you use a different microphone, like a different lab mic, like the Mic J mic, that will help to some degree because this microphone itself, uh, the ME22, is very sensitive. Um, however, I think it's still going to be a problem even with a lower level lab mic. Um, also, it is quite sensitive here also to movement and that kind of stuff. So that's going to be a problem with a lot of mics. Um, but you'll see if you move this around, it is quite sensitive to... Uh, you know, getting rubbed against something or uh, from cable noise and that kind of stuff. It's quite sensitive. Um, so if you want a very high sensitivity mic, then it's great. But if you don't want that, um, then it could be a bit of a problem. So uh, first thing, there is a way to possibly decrease that. Uh, they sell like attenuator cables or devices um, that you actually can plug in and decrease the signal going into your camera. Uh, so that is one possibility to do that. Um, so I'll link some of those down, down below as well if you guys want to check that out. It's a possible solution to still having this system and to uh, making that level lower. So that's one thing. Uh, also, as we discussed, there is some, you know, some kind of noise floor, electronic noise, some hiss, um, which isn't that bad. Um, and it may depend greatly upon the camera that you have. Um, so I'm finding that, you know, I did a ton of tests with my camera and I really thought that it was the system itself, but I'm actually finding that it's more so a problem with it going into my camera. I don't know why that is. I've tried to figure that out. Um, 
but for some reason when I plug this system into my camera, it creates that problem. Now, if I plug this system, the receiver, into a Zoom recorder, uh, then I get great crystal, crystal clear audio. Um, sounds great. So, I mean, of course, the Zoom has its own preamps, and it's going to sound better because it's a sound recorder. I'm going to let you guys hear that now and how that sounds. All right, guys, so this is an audio test of the Sennheiser XS Wireless Digital System, but now we're going into a Zoom H1 recorder instead of the audio from the camera. So this is how the audio sounds going directly from this wireless system into a Zoom H1 recorder, and it should sound a lot better. So it sounded pretty good, right? I mean, it sounds great. So I don't think the problem is with this system necessarily. I think it actually has a pretty good and a pretty clear signal. Uh, it's just for some reason going into my camera, it creates a problem. Um, also, you know, you could say that the problem is then, you know, that I'm hooking it into a recorder and that my problem is with my camera. Um, but if I, if I, um, run a road video micro, for instance, and hook that directly into my camera, uh, then it sounds pretty good. And I don't really get that noise floor, at least not to the level that I do with this system. So I'll let you guys hear that now. This is how it sounds when I hook a road video micro directly into the microphone port for my camera. All right, guys, this is the Rode Video Micro, an inexpensive shotgun mic, and we're also going by an inexpensive cable, a cable direct cable, and we're going directly into the Panasonic G85, just kind of judging how a microphone sounds and how the preamps in the camera sound when it's hooked directly into the camera. And it also wasn't bad, right? Um, so now also kind of even more comparably, what I'll let you hear is using a, a different lab mic because it works better without the screw connection. Um, so I'll just use the Mic J Lavalier microphone. And I'll let you guys hear how that sounds when I run that microphone directly into my camera. And this is how it sounds when you use the Mic J, just this budget lavalier microphone, going directly into the Panasonic G85. We're just seeing how the preamps sound when you use a lav mic going directly into the Panasonic G85. So as you guys can see, for whatever reason, the problem isn't so much with the system or the clarity or the distortion in the system. For some reason, when it goes into my camera, uh, it creates a problem. You know, it's not horrible. You could possibly edit some of that out, especially if you're skilled in audio editing, um, the levels and that kind of stuff like that. But for me, it is a problem, um, and I would like to have a cleaner signal. So it will depend on your situation, so it's something for you guys to consider uh, and maybe test out and see whether or not that's the case for you. All right, guys, so that was really boring, but it's necessary. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go outside and do some range tests. We're going to see how far this can go. Uh, we're going to see how it deals with wind noise and other noises, and then I'll give you my final thoughts on the Sennheiser XS wireless digital system. All right, so we're back on the Sennheiser wireless system. Uh, what we're going to do right now is just take a walk around my house. I'm not going to make you guys endure the entire thing, but I'm just going to do a test for myself, and then I'll kind of let you hear any you know disturbances and stuff like that that I hear. All right, so right now I am walking right by the camera. Now you hear some sounds from stuff in my house, just kind of whatever's going on. Going up the stairs from the basement. Walking into the main floor, about 10, 10 to 15 feet above uh, where I am. Dishwasher's running, so I'm gonna hear a dishwasher right now. I'm walking right by uh, kind of my security system, which runs off some kind of a frequency there. Now I'm walking into uh, kind of our back addition room. So I'm walking through uh, actually seeing how this sounds. Okay, I'll take a walk here again. Kind of go through the kitchen where there's some interference. Uh, in that room also I just walked in, that's where my Wi-Fi router and stuff is as well. So uh, here I'm walking by the dishwasher, some things in the kitchen. Now walk upstairs. I have a TV upstairs and some other, another router, uh, an extender. And the TV's actually running right now as well. Okay, and this is probably 75 to 100 feet maybe uh, from the camera. It's about as far as I can go. And this will complete this test. All right guys, this is the Sennheiser XS Wireless Digital. We're using the lav kit and I'm about 10, 12 feet right now away from the camera. So as you can see, this is my back of my pocket here. Um, it's super easy to conceal. Um, so really, really convenient. You can stick it in the pocket even, just make sure you don't press that button, but it is pretty hard to press. Um, so right now we're gonna do a little test here for range. So far the range is not looking very good, um, but we're gonna see what we can get here. So I'll uh, keep walking right now. So again, we're about 10 feet right now. We're gonna walk. I will walk kind of backwards, uh, you know, because normally you're gonna be facing the camera when you're doing narrative and stuff like that. And I would imagine we're getting close to the range here. So actually I can pull it out here uh, we can tell by what color it is if we still have good range or not. So we still have good range here. It's green. So we are at about 35 feet probably. 
Uh, if I'm behind my back now, let's see. Okay. Okay, so right about here, um, if I face forward, we're getting pretty good range. Um, right now, if I put this in front of me, but I have to put it in my front pocket or something like that, maybe um, that would probably work if you wanted to do that. Um, however, if you put it behind you, which is probably typically where you have a microphone, uh, then it wouldn't be in direct range of sight, and probably at this point, you're going to start having a loss of audio. So this is roughly the range. I would say uh, to be safe, probably stay with inside of about 40 feet off this microphone. So again, here I'm pretty good, but if I turn around and walk a few feet, I imagine that you'll probably lose me. Um, so right here, it's green. I'm going to walk away. Okay, good. So right now I'm trying to talk right now. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. So again, it's, I uh, can probably hear me here, but if I go around here, you probably won't be able to hear me. So right now I'm talking, but if it's through my body, you can't hear me. Oh, there you go. Okay. So turn around again. We're going to be pretty good here. And now we're out closer to getting close to 80 to 90 feet. And right at this mark here, we should be right at about 100 feet. So as long as this isn't, is in direct line of sight, that's pretty good. Um, I personally am probably never going to be further from my microphone than this. Uh, maybe if I'm drilling like drone video or something like that. But otherwise, you know, you're typically probably going to be within 20, 30 feet of your camera most likely. Um, for any kind of a video. So really not too bad. Um, just have to be aware of where this, you know, um, transmitter is and whether or not is in direct line of sight of your camera. So definitely if you're doing a whole lot of dynamic stuff and moving around and that kind of thing, um, then you're going to need this transmitter to be on the front of your body somewhere. But you can stick it inside of a pocket. Let's try that. Um, so it's not the most ideal thing right now, but if I stick it inside of right here. For instance, if I were to try to do that, uh, that's a possibility basically. And right now we're probably at 150 feet, which is pretty far away. Um, and from what I can tell, I'm still getting pretty good audio. So again, not a problem. If I turn around, let's try to keep talking. I'll quickly find. So any turning around of this, then definitely you're in trouble. So not too bad really overall. Uh, but again, something to consider as far as range goes. And let's keep going with this range as long as I'm facing the camera. And now we're out probably to, I would say 200 feet. Um, so it's, 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 it's Sennheiser claims, you know, to have a 250 foot range or around uh, 100 meters, I believe. 75 meters, sorry. Uh, 75 meters, so um, not too bad, really. And we keep going here, keep going here. And I would say I'm probably close to 300 feet away from the camera. Um, so actually quite good as far as range goes. Again, you just need to be in direct line of sight with a sensor or with this, you know, transmitter to the camera itself. So it's really good. It's still showing up as being green, uh, which is quite impressive. We are probably at 400 feet now. Okay. Keep going, 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 going. Wow. It's actually pretty impressive. Um, if you guys can see me anymore. So, okay. So I'm starting to lose audio, but I am probably, <laughs> I'm probably a thousand feet away right now. I'm probably about a thousand feet away right now. I can still, I'm still getting intermittent signals. So that is crazy. It's getting kind of dark here, but I also did want to do a quick test to see how this handles a very loud noise level. So uh, even at that negative 12 dB with a mic limiter on, can we clip the audio? Now, of course, if you don't have a mic limiter on your camera, which you probably do, um, then that would be a problem. But let's see how it sounds here. If I just do some clapping, if I try to do a little bit of like loud talking, fa la 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 la, or if I do a little whistle, now, I'm not very good at whistling, but uh, or if I kind of walk around, just kind of run. Um, how does that sound? Of course, we're going to get some noise from it bouncing around. And if I just do a kind of a loud intro. Hey, this is Chad from Better Life Reviews. How does it sound right now that I'm talking very loud to the microphone? Probably pretty silly. All right, so what's kind of the conclusion of the Sennheiser XS wireless digital system? It's an excellent system. Um, as we discussed, it's tiny. It's flexible. It uh, has right angle mounts, so it mounts directly on top of the camera. Uh, both the transmitter and the receiver have locking mechanisms where it locks in so you can be really, you know, sure that it's secure. Uh, five hours battery charge is not too bad at all and it can be recharged, both the transmitter and the receiver, by USB-C, including while you're using it. Uh, so a small power bank and you're good to go for any amount of time. Uh, and it's super flexible as far as where it can be mounted. The fact that you can get an XLR, XLR transmitter 
Uh, and put that anywhere. I'll get into your camera. Uh, the fact that you can use a handheld mic then or you can use a boom mic. Uh, so it's an incredible system. Overall, the clarity is very good as I've shown. Um, however, it does depend upon what camera you're using and how it's going to you know, be received by your preamps, how strong your preamps are, and definitely having um, kind of too hot of a signal and the ability, you know, lacking the ability to attenuate that audio and to make it less strong definitely could be a problem. Um, there are some potential workarounds to that, uh, but overall an excellent system with good range, especially when the transmitter is facing directly towards the receiver. Um, you're getting that, you know, several hundred up to a thousand feet range which is excellent, you know, but as we saw, getting inside of, you know, 40 to 50 feet is necessary at the very most if you're going to be moving around and having things block um, the transmitter here. So a big dramatic difference there. Uh, not as good probably as some of the other systems that are out there. They're a little bit bulkier, uh, like the Roadlink or the AVX system. I'm going to have to compare them directly against each other, um, but I have seen better performance out of those systems. So, um, you know, it's an excellent system for people who are on a lower budget, still not cheap, but a lower budget, um, who want something super flexible, great for vloggers, great for people who travel because of its small, compact size. Um, it's also less offensive and less obvious in situations like public situations where you'd have, you know, uh, a large like shotgun mic and it's like super obvious, you know, and people are like, oh, what are you doing, you know? Um, so it's definitely more compact in that way. This could even potentially be um, used to go into a, like a cell phone or another type of camera as well uh, because of its size and its flexibility as well if you can mount that up. So um, a ton of flexibility, um, overall a very good system, good quality. Um, I do actually think this mic, the ME22 mic, is pretty good. Um, it's just a super sensitive mic, but actually listening back to it, I did actually feel that the mic was clearer and it had a better um, range and better vocal reproduction and kind of a better low end as well uh, than that cheaper mic j mic um, and certainly it's more durable has that locking mechanism a thicker cord and that kind of stuff it's just the mic is sensitive um, it is sensitive to movement and uh, cord noise and that kind of stuff as well but it is a great mic and the fact that you're only paying you know the system uh, just for the base set would be three hundred dollars um, but for three hundred fifty dollars you're getting you know uh, the transmitter the receiver uh, something to charge it with and not the block with the cable um, and a clip for the mic and all these things. Um, you're getting, you know, all that and you're getting $130 microphone, you know, for that. So basically you're saving $70 there. Um, so even if you were to get a very inexpensive lab mic, um, you know, unless it's less than $50, you're actually kind of getting this, you know, you're getting this really discounted basically by getting this, um, getting this ME22 microphone. So it's a great deal. And then if you add on the ENG set, um, you add on the XLR, then that would typically be about $179.95 it's currently saying for just that one piece. Um, and you're getting that for an additional $100, so you're saving another $80 there as well. So getting it kind of all bundled together uh, initially is great. Of course, you can add on pieces later if you need to. Um, like I said, this can only go to, you know, you can only have one receiver going to one transmitter at a time, um, so you can't do like dual audio into your camera directly um, into one you know receiver. Uh, but there is the ability then to use up to five, they said, different sets of these simultaneously. Uh, if you have one and your friend has one, uh, and you're using different cameras in the same proximity, you should be able to switch uh, channels uh, and then not interfere with each other. So overall, a super awesome, flexible, tiny system, um, well-priced, good clarity, um, pretty good battery life considering the size of it. Uh, they just need to work on um, maybe kind of the uh, cable noise and that kind of stuff, and certainly a way to attenuate uh, to, you know, to kind of lower that audio signal to make it more adaptable to more kind of cameras and make sure that we're not clipping out the audio uh, and getting that kind of distorted audio. So that is the Sennheiser XS Wireless Digital System. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please write, write these down below. Um, and I will be happy to answer anything that I possibly can. And I will uh, make sure you guys check out the links in the description below as well if you want to support the channel. Uh, that'd be greatly appreciated as well as betterlifereviews.com. Spending a ton of time there, so please check that out. Um, and all the reviews are there and all the deals that I have on a daily basis. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.